Hello future architects, welcome back to Architecture 101. I have to apologize for my long hiatus. A lot has happened in the last couple of months since my last video. Anyway, so I hope you found my last two videos on the architectural practice exam parts one and two helpful and it's helped you progress on your journey. Today I'd like to talk about part three of the registration process, which is the interview. Now, if you've passed part two, the written exam, congratulations, the worst is over. Honestly, part three is probably the easiest part of the registration process for me. And it's really just a conversation between architects and you should go into this with a calm and peaceful mind. Um, you can even imagine it as having a conversation with your director or senior architect at the firm and just discussing your career progress, your knowledge, your learning, and what you've achieved to date. Now, of course, I wouldn't be making this video if there weren't tips and tricks I can tell you to help you prepare for the interview and just give you that extra boost that you need because let's be real, it's still a test and you need to pass. Tip one, study your logbook and statement. Before the interview, the examiners will be reviewing your logbook and statement and they'll definitely be using it as a guide for the questions that will be asking you. For example, if they notice that you logged fewer hours in some competencies and you might have you might seem like you have less experience in other areas of knowledge, they might press you a bit harder with a few questions to make sure you actually have the knowledge to practice as an architect. Similarly, if you have some suspicious claims in your logbook and statement, they might ask you a few extra questions to make sure that you have the experience that you claim. Tip two, prepare at least two example projects to discuss. Typically, the examiners will be choosing up to two projects from your logbook and statement to use as the basis for your interview. From these projects, they might ask you questions about the nature of the projects, um, the tasks that you were involved in, and any problems that might have come up, or even just some hypothetical questions based on those projects. They might ask you to choose your own projects um, for discussion, and that's purely so that you feel comfortable talking about and discussing the details of those projects. Make sure to prepare at least two example projects. Ideally, these two projects would cover the full scope of architectural services, or you can have one project that covers the design stages very well, and another project that covers the documentation and delivery stages very well. These projects should be able to demonstrate the breadth of your knowledge and cover all of the competencies that you are required to demonstrate. And you should have been deeply involved in the delivery of the project across multiple stages, not just you know for a couple of weeks to help out on a project. Choose your projects carefully and make sure you know the details so you can talk about it fluently and you can answer any questions that the examiners might throw at you. Also, choose your projects based on familiarity, not complexity or uh, unique design features. What they care about is how you manage the project responsibly and how you demonstrated the skills and knowledge required of an architect, not design flair. This is not a studio presentation. Tip three, prepare real world examples relating to each of the competencies in your logbook. For each of the 15 competencies, prepare at least one real world example of how you applied your knowledge in practice. Ideally, these examples would be coming from your example projects, but you might slot in one or two from different projects to fill in the gaps. By having these real world examples, it makes your answer more believable and your examiner will be less likely to question the authenticity of your knowledge. Now, if you had watched my previous videos, you would have prepared these examples already and put them into your statement, so you would be more than prepared for this part. Did you watch it? Probably didn't. Go back and watch it now. Right here. When preparing your examples, try to answer them to the wording of the competency because that's how you're being assessed. For example, element 6.1, identification and adoption of a strategy, program and process of documentation integrated through all project stages to enable project delivery. Sorry, I read that one. So a bad answer would be, we produced tender documentation and sent it to the builder. Um, I took instructions from a project architect, they told me what to do, and I followed it, and that's it. That's a terrible answer. Do not do that. A better answer would be, from project A, 
um, our strategy was to develop the documentation in stages um, to be able to deliver the project faster. Um, and we created a brief of deliverables based on the tender requirements and made sure, made sure that was integrated into the documentation package. We went through different stages such as schematic design, design development, um, tender documentation, and then from there we developed the documentation into uh, construction um, document level documentation with coordination on site with the selected builder. Even if you didn't have executive level experience, meaning you didn't make those decisions, what you're trying to do is demonstrate your understanding of why those decisions were made and how you might apply that in your practice in the future. Tip four, review your part two results. Prior to booking your interview, you would have received your part two results and within that you would have received a breakdown of all the questions and the competencies they were related to and the number of questions you got right and the number of questions you got wrong. Your examiners will be using those results as a guide as well to perform questions and any areas that you perform poorly on during part two, they will likely test you again just to make sure that you do have that knowledge and the results were just because of exam stress. So review your results, study a bit more, brush up on the areas that you feel you are a bit weaker in. Um, it's very normal to forget everything after an exam, I know I did, but try and keep that momentum till after the interview until the very end. Tip 5. Do a practice interview. This might sound obvious, but practice makes perfect, particularly with interviews. If you're not particularly gifted with public speaking or you, you, know, you might have some social anxiety, that's okay. Um, there's only two people in the room. What you can do is just find someone who is um, more senior than you, who might have gone through the interview process, and just do a practice interview with them. Prepare some questions. Um, give them your statement and logbook to review just like you would in the actual interview and just get them to run through the interview process with you. You may not be asked the actual questions you'll be asked during the interview but you'll definitely get a sense of how that process will work um, and you might be able to calm your nerves a bit when you get to the actual interview. Repeat it a few times, ideally a few days apart so that you can track your progress and probably you'll find that you'll get better every time. Remember to relax. Again, it is a conversation between colleagues, between professionals. No one is out to get you. No one is out to trip you up. They just want to know that you have the knowledge to become a qualified architect, which is what we're here to do. Bonus tip, book your interview early. This is more a preference, but try and book your interview as early as possible. Uh, booking should be open as soon as you get your results and try to get in as early as possible. This is really for two reasons. Number one is get it over and done with. This is the last stage, it's literally the last hundred meters. The earlier you finish your interview, the earlier you can finish, the earlier you can celebrate and the earlier you can just get back to a normal life and back to social, your normal social life if you have one. Reason number two, the wait is agony. Um, I've had friends who did it after me and like all I hear them say is, oh my God, my friend passed, you know, I'm so jealous or, oh my God, my friend didn't pass, what if I don't pass? Like, either way, you're just going to be stressed out of your mind and that's really not going to help your performance during the interview. So my suggestion is try to get in as early as possible, just get it over and done with so that you don't have to suffer the wait, which might be weeks, like days or weeks after your friends have completed it and all you can do is wait. So now you must be wondering, Eddie, you missed the most important part. What did they actually ask you at the interview? This is what I'm watching this video for. I'm glad you asked. I've prepared a prep sheet to help you prepare for the interview and it's based on my own experience of what I was asked during the interview as well as feedback from my friends who have also gone through the interview process. This prep sheet will give you an idea of what you might be asked during the day and how you should prepare for the interview with some example questions um, you might ask yourself. The questions you will be asked on the day will be at the discretion of the examiner, so it might not be exactly the same, but from what I've heard, the format is fairly consistent. Now, you can download this free prep sheet from my website, architecture101.info. So I've prepared this website as a way to share information better than I can on YouTube. 
and it is custom designed to give you all the information that you need to get through the registration process effectively and efficiently. So I noticed some of my friends really struggled to attend the in-person classes for PALS or for PARKS and also keeping up with the huge amount of material they have to get through every single week for three months. For people who might have kids or family commitments or other life commitments, I can see how this might be a real struggle. So I wanted to come up with a way to help people learn what they needed to learn at their own time, at their own pace, and in the most efficient way possible. On the website, you can find 12 lessons covering all of the topics that you might be tested on at the exam or in the interview in a simple and easy to digest digital format. You can study on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop, anywhere at any time. And there will also be podcast recordings so you can even study while you're driving, watching the kids or like folding laundry. The material has been compiled from the AIA acumen notes as well as my own experience and my own research. And I've also tried to fill in a couple of gaps that I felt the courses and material really didn't cover very well. For example, Lesson 4, Business Planning and Management, is a unique offering from Architecture 101. It takes you step by step through this, the process of starting your own business, employment, insurances, and your legal responsibilities. Starting your own business, starting your own practice is a natural next step after getting your registration. How people like even get registered just to start their own practice. I know I did. Um, so there aren't many resources out there that take you through the process of how to set up an architectural practice and how to fulfill your responsibilities as both an architect and a business owner. I also noticed that this material wasn't covered very well in the Acumen notes and in the PALS, um, PALS course and it actually Im um, impacted my performance in the um, exam. For example, one of the questions, an entire question out of the nine, was based on employment practice. And I personally had a good working knowledge of employment practice, so I was able to do very well. But I know of some of my friends who, because they weren't taught this information and they never knew to study it, they actually did very poorly. And if you think about it, one out of nine questions, if you get it wrong, that could mean a fail for the entire exam. So I'm hoping through this material, um, you won't be caught out and you will have the knowledge you need to really be a well-rounded architect and a business owner. You can get all 12 lessons for $150 or purchase packages of three to four lessons for $50 each. It's really great if you need to brush up on a few topics before the exam or before the interview. You can also get started with just a free membership, which will give you access to the first lesson for free, as well as free downloads such as an example logbook filled out an example statement of practical experience, and also the interview preparation prep sheet that we talked about earlier. Please continue to support the website and this channel so I can keep making more content to help you get through the registration process easier. Coming up, I'll be making more videos explaining specific topics that you might be tested on in the part two exam, particularly topics that I know people will find complicated or confusing, such as tendering and contract administration. If you have any topics that you would like me to make a video about, or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email and I'll try to get to it soon. In the meantime, if you're preparing for the exam in April, good luck and thank you for your support. Shout out to Vibewire for letting me use this space for the recording today. Vibewire is a youth-led co-working space in the heart of Sydney that is focused on inspiring the next generation of social, social change makers. If you are looking to start your own business or if you have an entrepreneurial idea and you're in need of co-working space, definitely hit them up. There you have um, hot desks and permanent spaces for very affordable prices and the crowd is amazing and I'll be here as well. So see you there. Action. Memories. Da -da 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 -da. So I hope you found my last two videos on the architectural practice. Then practice the game. Practice. I hope you found the last two videos practice the game. So I hope you found my last two videos on the architectural practice exam part one. <laughs> oh, what is even English? Oh. Oh.
helps just to fill in the gap. Flaps. Flaps. I do, I do, I do, 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 do.